So the second of these three videos about compositing in Final Cut Pro 10 using some of the different masking tools, using some of the different compositing tools that we have available to us, we're going to look at how we work with the Cineflare gradient tool to create a nice sliced effect um, for a single video. So essentially we're going to be using some of the same techniques we used in the first of these three videos if you had a look at that to kind of slice up our text. But then we're going to be looking at how we can mix that with some video. So we're going to grab first of all a video clip down to the timeline. And I'm just going to do Shift and Z to zoom to my entire timeline. And you may want to, before we kind of get started here, just go to Window, Workspaces, and check the default workspace to make sure you're looking at the same layout as me. And the only thing we'll need up initially um, will be the Effects panel across the right. So the Cineflare Gradient tool is from FX Factory, who are kindly sponsoring this video. And basically, you can try out any of these tools on FX Factory for free. So you can kind of go and see how they work. You can follow along with this tutorial. So we'll jump into the Cineflare Gradient tool, and we are looking for the gradient for images. So if we click on this and drag it across, you can see basically we get this gradient straight away on our image. We've got a couple of on screen controllers for managing kind of location of the gradient in a couple of different uh, ways. And then we also have our gradient options up at the top right. And you can see we've got a linear gradient, a radial gra gradient, and a quadrant gradient. So essentially the way this works is we're going to work with these gradients, and then we're going to layer these up with some different images. So I'm going to work with uh, the quadrant gradient, which is basically going to give me kind of four quadrants around my image to work with. I'm just going to click on the little down arrow here to select some different colors. We'll kind of mix these up a little bit away from the original colors. You can see we've got the kind of different locations of our gradients, the gradient locations here. And then we've also got the options for the start fade uh, and the end fade. So basically kind of where this is starting and finishing. So we'll leave these at the default for this particular example. It doesn't uh, too matter too, too much. We can also add in some travel for our gradient. So basically what that means is that um, we can have these gradients start and finish somewhere. So if we hover over the number here and hold down shift and just drag to the right, you can see we're getting those gradients to move. And I've moved my playhead here as well. So if we kind of move this across until we start to lose a couple of those gradients, you can see now in here, we're getting a little bit of movement throughout that, which can be nice if you wanted to have an image that isn't completely static. And if we scroll down, we've got some options for spin, which we're not going to work with for this particular example. Uh, and then we've got an outline on here as well, which again also doesn't matter in this particular example. And we've also got some help sections here, but I'm not going to worry too, too much about that. I mainly, as I've been working with the gradient tool, just been playing around with the on-screen controllers and then also the different gradient kind of color options that we have here. So what we're going to do now is duplicate up this image. So I'm just holding down the Alt key to duplicate it. And then on this duplicate of the image, I'm going to delete the gradient for images option here. So essentially what I want to do is now change the blend mode here to something like darken or multiply, and it's going to add to that gradient in the background. So you can see now as we play through this video, we've got the gradient, but we've also got this nice subtle little bit of travel and movement of the gradient as it kind of moves across to the right. So we're going to kind of mix this up a little bit. So with this first layer here, we're going to come across the right and we're going to come to our masks. And I'm going to add the draw mask to this layer. And we're just going to zoom out a little bit to 50% so we can see the edges here. And I'm just going to add a slice across here. So basically it's going to create some transparency between this image and the background. Actually, what I want to do here is also add that same transparency to the background layer as well. So I'm going to copy my image. So edit, copy, or command and C. And then edit, paste attributes in the background there. So now you can see I've just got that gradient uh, in the background, and it's flowing quite nicely. And it's left this kind of blank space at the top. So what we're going to do now is duplicate this background layer holding down the Alt, so this is my gradient. And I'm gonna flip these up, and we're just gonna change the colors here before we add another layer. So I'm gonna change this to some oranges, that's pretty good, and maybe some magentas. 
and let's see where the yellow drops in here. So let's just modify these a little bit. So you can see we've got two kind of different gradients in there. I'm going to change this magenta up a little bit to something a little bit more orange. So we're going to have orange at the top here. So just these kind of subtle varying degrees of color. So basically I've got my gradient at the top there. I am going to now duplicate this topmost image. So this is my image. So holding down the Alt key and dragging it up. And now with this layer, I'm just going to, again, just drag these up. And you can see now that with these two gradients and the kind of quick adjustments of those masks, we get this kind of nice effect where you have the two layers together. Now, if we view this at 100%, if we play this through, we get this real nice offsetting of those two different bits of color as well as this kind of nice movement of the gradient. So there's some similarity there in the movement, but then also this nice difference of the color. I'm just going to change this back to fit. So I want to move these layers around a little bit. Now, as soon as I move one of these layers to the left or to the right, I'm going to reveal the edge and I don't want to do that. So if you see when I drag this to the right, I'm revealing the edge there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of my layers and I'm going to increase the size of these by 115%. So I've selected all of these and then up in the inspector, I'm just typing in 115 and that will just kind of increase the scale of everything. And we can drag these down actually as a group when we've got them all selected. So I just want to keep some parts of this face central. And then what I'm going to do is click away. I'm going to select this top layer just as her eyes kind of look up at us. I'm going to add a keyframe for the position for this layer, for this next layer down as well. And then I'm going to come back in time to where our head is dipped. And we're going to with this layer, move it across to the right. Now you can see I can move this now without revealing that edge. So I'm just sort of eyeballing this. I want to try and keep that image on that line. We'll just do this for the top layer as well. I'm going to drag this one down to the right. And again, making sure I don't break that edge. So now if we play this through, we get that nice little bit of animation just at the moment where her head looks up. So you can see it's looking pretty nice. So some things you might want to do with these kind of stacked up layers is move them all at the same time to kind of give them a bit of uniformity. So if I come up to my, my titles here, I'm just going to grab from my Ripple Tools Complete tools here, the adjustment layer. We'll drop this on here and just stretch it out. I'm going to come down to my effects and stylize and just scroll down and we're looking for the handheld option here. Drop that on there. Now if we play this back, you can see we just get this nice little bit of movement that's animating alongside the kind of effects that we've added. So we're layering things up quite a lot here. And this series of tutorials is really inspired by one of my favorite graphic designers, David Carson. Um, and he always encourages people to just play around with things, play around with the tools that you've got, try and find different ways that things can fit together. And that's what we're really doing in these series of tutorials, trying to think about how we can link the built-in plugins with Final Cut Pro so it's useful for everyone watching the tutorial. And then also have a look at some of the, the plugins that I think are really cool, like this gradient plugin from Cineflare, which is a nice way of kind of adding these types of composited color effects in Final Cut Pro 10. So this is where we're going to wrap up this particular part of this tutorial. And now we're going to move on to the third part of the tutorial, which is one of my favorite bits where we're going to look at how we work with hand-drawn sketches to really kind of animate and kind of play around with layers in Final Cut Pro 10.